Hey Wampers and welcome to this little beginner's tutorial in which I'll make you more familiar with our tools and how anyone, even you, can create 3D with it. I'll show and explain to you how you can create a simple but cute little coffee cup like this one and how you can publish your models to our community page. So let's get started. First off, let's have a look at our top bar. This is where we find our primitives menu. For a coffee cup, we can start with a basic cylinder shape. Navigating in WOMP is very simple. By holding down the left mouse click, we can rotate around our object. Holding down the right mouse click allows us to pan in different kind of directions. When we use our mouse wheel, we can zoom in or zoom out of our scene. Now, once we have a primitive selected, it will open up its properties menu at the right. If we scroll down a little bit, here we find our materials menu. Here we can, for example, make change to the color of our object. For the coffee cup, let's choose a light bluish tone. And now we can also make changes to the metalness and roughness of our object. When we have a high metalness and a low roughness, it will be very reflective and reflect our global image in the object. For this coffee cup though, let's have a low metalness and a higher roughness. In terms of the workflow of WOMP, it's best to copy shapes instead of getting out new primitives because it allows you to keep the same material and position as the shape before. As you can see in the scene list at the left, we now have two cylinders in our scene. Now, for our coffee cup, we want to make a hole into it. So we can rescale our object from the center, we can navigate with the arrows around it, we call it the gizmo, and we can also scale the objects by grabbing it on the edges. Now, to turn it into a negative, we can see the behavior on the right in the properties menu. When we turn the object into a negative, it will cut from the other object. As you can see here, it will cut a hole into our already existing cylinder. Now, to make this a bit more organic looking, we can use the roundness option in our object's properties menu at the right to round up the edges. And also, we can go to our negative primitive and increase the goop strength. Gooping is a feature that allows us to blend primitives. This works in the negative and in the positive mode. In the positive mode, you might realize it a bit more what it really does. By blending simple shapes together, we can create a lot more complex looking shapes out of that. And if we simply increase the goop strength just a little bit in the negative mode, it will round up the edges from the inside as well. Now, let's copy this exact same shape again, scale it quite a bit bigger and put it at the bottom of our cup. And now if we increase our goop strength, it will round it up from the bottom, which gives it this nice organic shape, I think. And now let's go on and create the actual liquid, some coffee maybe. For that, we copy the same shape again, but now we are facing one problem. It is affected by the negative that's already inside of it. As we can see in the scene list at the left, the red symbol next to the primitive indicates that it's a negative object subtracting from the ones above. So to change that, we simply need to drag our other primitive that we want to not be affected by them below our negative primitives. And then we can also make a change to the color. For that, we go back to the object's properties menu at the right, scroll down to the materials menu, and first off change the color, and then we also want to change the other sliders that we have here. We want to bring the roughness down because liquid is quite reflective. And instead of metalness, we here want to go with the glass slider. Because the glass allows us to have it a bit see-through. We still see the edges of the cup a little bit and, well, that it's liquid. I feel like it's a really nice option for that. And now, one thing that's still missing is like a little handle so we can grab the cup a bit more easily. For that, we copy the same shape again, our basic primitive, and now we can rotate our object if we go to the corners of the gizmo. A little trick here is to hold down shift to rotate in a 45 degrees angle. Now, if we grab the little buttons at the edge of the gizmo, we can scale our cylinder wider. 
and it will do it equally on both sides if we hold down Alt while doing so. Now we just scale it a little bit smaller and bring it down into position. And then we want to copy the exact same shape again, scale it wider but smaller and turn it into a negative object. Now it's not affecting our cup anymore because we have it at the top of our scene list so it's not affecting anything above it really except for the handle. When we give it a bit of goop strength it gives it this nice roundness from within and when we then go to our main primitive, our positive of the handle and turn the roundness to 100% it really gives it this nice round handle instead of it being too sharp and edgy. And now once we have our finished coffee cup we can go to our scene list at the left select all of our primitives that we currently have you can select the first one hold shift and click on the last one to select all of them and then put them together into one union a union is basically like a folder or like a group that you put all of those primitives into just one thing and that you can then also move together all at once it's really nice to keep your stuff organized. You can even name objects or unions. Definitely go and do that so you know where, where all your stuff is. And then now we can go on and create some little extras to this coffee cup. For this, let's get out a new sphere, give it a light color, put on some roughness and some translucency. This lets the light come through more. And then we just start gooping together a few spheres to indicate like a stylized steam coming from the coffee cup to indicate that it's hot and give it a bit of, you know, it's extra touch. I think it looks quite nice and really, you know, it embraces our gooping function, which is so fun to play around with. And lastly, I want to give it some character by adding some eyes and for that I'm just copying our main cylinder again, scale it quite a bit smaller, turn it into a more round object and change the color to a black kind of a bit of reflective uh, material as well. And now one really handy trick that I can show you with this here is to activate the mirror on the properties menu. If you now drag your object to the right, you will see that we have our object mirrored from the center. This is really useful to create symmetrical objects and really handy for eyes and faces and all of that kind of stuff as well. And I'll then also just copy the same primitive again and make a white version for the highlights. I'm just scaling them quite a bit smaller and putting them up. And yeah, I think that does look quite cute, like it gives the, the cup so much more character just by adding something as simple as that. And yeah. And it is then time to finalize our creation. For that we want to turn off the floor grid in the lights and environment panel at the right. And now we can choose our backdrop color at the top bar. Here you can simply click on some of the colors that are pre-created for you or you can click on the plus icon to choose your very own color from the color picker. For this, let's go for like go a light, warm, yellowish tone, which I think makes it look very comfy and very warm, just like, you know, how a cup of coffee should feel like. And then you can also click on the global lighting to change the shading and how the light is displayed, how the colors is displayed. This is basically the skybox image for this creation. It will also be reflected in very reflective surfaces, so definitely have that in mind. And you can also play around with the exposure of it. This is basically the brightness of the scene as well. Now I've made a few last changes to my coffee and I also added a soft spotlight which you can also find at the top bar. This really allows for some more dramatic and individual lighting as well. You can bring down that exposure and only light your scene with the individual lights if you want to. And yeah, now that we have our finished model, make sure it's in the center of the scene because we are basically the camera. 
And then we can go on to the share button, which you can find at the top right. Here you could download an image of your model or we can publish it to our community. Here we choose the thumbnail. This is how it will display it on our community page. We can choose a title. We can just write cute coffee cup and we can add some hashtags, which are like, you know, labels that people can click on and then find the model in there. And we can also change our copyright settings if we want other people to remix our projects or not. And yeah, then we can basically share it and publish it to our community. And it can be found in the Discover page. So yeah, I hope you guys found this little beginner's guide helpful and that it got you inspired to create something yourself. We would love to see your creations on the Discover page. And if you have any more questions, feel free to let us know in the comments or join our Discord server where we are always happy to help. So with that, thank you so much for watching and happy whomping.